Welcome to the slightly improvised session tonight. Thanks to David. We're doing that tonight via Jitsi. Unfortunately, New Zealand Open Source Society's big blue button instance didn't like the last update, so uh, audio didn't seem to be working at all. So Jitsi instead is actually first time for me using Jitsi. David has been using it, I think, before for other sessions and whatnot. Looks quite flash, quite impressed. Um, I'm not sure whether the paid for version also allows recording. Uh, there's one feature I quite like about Big Blue Button. Um, so I'll be just doing a recording via OBS, Open Broadcast Studio. And um, I'll turn that now full screen. Cool, okay, that would do. And um, right, so I'm just gonna start with a little bit of my end. It's a little bit unprepared because I had a very long weekend and a very long day today. Um, so let's make things a bit bigger in this. So topic is uh, essential command line tools. Um, Ian sent through an interesting video, um, which some of you might actually want to see as well at some stage. I'm posting it here in the chat that the title is called um, 18 um, sort of like Linux commands that will change the way you will use the Linux command line. Um, and I actually learned something too. <laughs> and I mean, I'm only a user, I'm not really a sysadmin or anything, so I only have a certain subset that I constantly use. And um, yeah, so some of these things will actually show up in, the, in minor sort of like short demo as well. All right, I'm gonna... You'll be Ian, you'll be monitoring a little bit if there's something in the chat, please. Thank you. Cool. All right. So, I mean, first of all, anyone knows the ls command. Um, you will probably also know the ls minus l for the long format or the minus a for actually all. So you can also see hidden files like anything that starts with a dot, the dot and the dot dot for the directories. Just watch your microphone. Yeah, okay. Okay, I'll try holding it then. Um, cool, I'll give it a go. Um, so, but one thing that I actually learned many, many, many years ago was actually quite useful is if you um, use sorting and then also reverse it. So for instance, the LS minus LTR means long format sorted by time in reverse. So in other words, it shows me the newest file last. First. No, I think last, I believe. Oh, yeah. yeah, so it's at the bottom. So if you have a very large directory with lots and lots of files in there and they're constantly being updated and whatnot, um, it's quite, easy to get lost and ls minus ltr or i guess also ls minus um, tr will probably do as well but um, if you want to output multiple columns but usually you probably want to see also size and timestamp as well when it actually was modified can i mention capital a instead of little a so it can off dot and dot dot it shows everything else beginning with the dot Oh, if you're doing ls minus a, yeah, capital a. Oh, right, cool. See, so that's the one I use all the time. Not oh, yeah, that's that's, that's quite handy. Yeah. Cool, that's good to know. So, <clears throat> so capital a, sort of like if you want to avoid the two directories dot and dot dot, yeah. um, that leaves those of compared to ls minus a, where you can see them over here Which showing you don't up. Want to see them. I mean, yeah, I mean the. They're always there, so it's a little bit pointless having them. They, they shouldn't be in the file system. They should I know. Be in the kernel. Yeah, but it is what it is, mm -hmm. and I guess that's why minus capital A came, and then let's let's skip those. So that's quite handy. Another thing that I sometimes use is ls minus one, which outputs it basically just in one column rather than the usual ls, which just has as many columns as it can sort of like fit in. Um, so you can always have it in a particular, just in one column, so it's a shortcut for that. Can be quite handy for that too. That's ls. Just dash dash full time. That shows you the full... Dash, dash dash dash. Dash l and then dash dash full time as well. 
from like the full dash dash full dash time. Full dash time. Full dash time. And then all oh, right. Oh, that's handy. That's cool. And it goes up to nanoseconds. Hmm. Okay. And then you could probably also do um, based on time. Yeah. And then sort it by that. Yeah. Cool. Oh, that's handy. That's good. Because um, I always wanted sort of like with the resolution, you only had it down to the seconds with that. Well, that's good to know. Um, I'll add that to my notes. Um, cool. Um, the other thing is, um, I'm just switching back to my LL. Um, if sometimes when you're dealing with files, especially as a data scientist, you quite often deal with CSV files and other things. Um, you quite often just want to inspect the start or the end of a file. Um, so the start with CSV files, for instance, what are basically the column names? So for that, you can use the head command. Um, I'll probably make it a bit wider. Head and um, by, if we look at that, um, you can specify via minus n how many lines you want to see. And by default, it's 10. So for instance, in a CSV file, you would like to have only one and just that output. And then you can see, oh yeah, cool. That's sort of like the header. So this file actually has a header row. So I can see actually what's happening with that. So that's quite handy for that. Um, tail is basically the opposite. So rather than at the start of the file, of the text file looks at the end. Um, so if I look, if I use the same on the same file, it shows me basically, oops, I should probably have a one in there. See, it shows me basically the last row or the last line in that file. For a CSV file, not necessarily interesting. Interesting, um, this particular command is when you're actually looking at log files, for instance. Uh, you just want to output sort of like the last, what has been done in the last 10 rows, for instance, of that log file, for instance. So if I have um, minus 10, and what was the log file? I wanted to see. One shortcut, if the number is positive, you can leave out the end. Really? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, we'll get to that shortcut. Yeah. Um, so, for instance, if um, Debian Package Manager, sort of like you can see the last 10 operations then that have happened. And according to Lawrence, there's a shortcut. So, if it's a positive number, you can just leave out the N. Write it as a negative looking number. <laughs> and kind of like a negative number. So you want to have the last five and we can drop the end. So if you want to save another character, David, then you can uh, go with that approach then. So that's quite handy. However, if you have log files and you're actually trying to monitor sort of like whenever something's happening, whether it's, um, for instance, the firewall or other log files that are sort of like written to by background processes or demons, then the tail minus F is your friend because the minus F means it follows the file, what's happening to it. So if I open another shell and ooh, what do I do? Does it? Um, bum, 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 bum. I would need to install something. Right. Um, what are we going to install? Any, any suggestions for an application that I should install right now, which are probably obscure and I probably wouldn't have on my laptop? Uh, application? Any small thing? ZSH. Or ZSH. ZSH. Oh, I'm not sure whether I want to have a... <laughs> okay. Um, ZSH. Oops. Or some Python package that I've been looking at lately. So I'll just install ZSH because I don't think so I'm going to have... Okay, um, let's see. Yes. It's a feature of tail. Oh, cool. So you can see in the top now as the package is basically being used. You can also see if I now uninstall. I think it's uninstall. Clean, clean Oops, remove. 
Yep, uh, in just a second. Um, if I remove it again, you can see all the things are happening up there as well. Um, yep, yeah, what's the question? Yeah, hi everyone. Hey. Um, um, why are you using apt get and not just apt? Uh, habit. Okay, <laughs> that's all. <laughs> it took me a long time to get, get out of the habit too. I know, it's just, uh, I can't be bothered. <laughs> When I sometimes copy paste commands and think, hey, it's missing the get. Oh, no, it's right. You can actually use it without. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's really old habit from my ends. But yes, okay. you're correct. You can just use apt. Thank you. No problem. And thanks for pointing it out that you can save a few characters there. Um, cool. So this was basically tail minus F in action. So it's quite handy sort of also you can just press enter um, to, to enter a few empty lines to see actually, oh, if I do the next action, is there something happening or not? So you can actually then see and scroll between those two. Oh, here's the things that the last action actually did. And you could, for instance, copy paste something or inspect that further, further processing like that. Um, what's the next one? So that's basically head and tail. Um, another one that I quite often use is WC. I always sort of like my my way of remembering is this word count, but it does not just words. It, the way I usually use it, it, I use it for counting lines. Um, so if you if we look at the help, um, so we can use use it for bytes, characters, lines, um, and you can also have null term to the things that you read things from from input. Um, but we're just doing sort of like simple things here. So for instance, if I use looking at my CSV file from earlier, um, I can output the number of lines that I have in here with WC-L and then RS CSV and it says 151. If you don't like uh, the output of the name, um, what I usually do is you can pipe it basically through and then you don't see that. That's the reason why I always actually pipe things with cat rather than using WC with the minus L Lawrence. Oh, fine, okay, yeah, that's it. That's, that's a, because yeah. sometimes I use that number that's being output in an expression and calculate something with it, rather, and I don't want the name in it. But there's, I don't think, so. no, there wasn't. That was the thing that I was always missing. There was, well, point out was the first word of the line, you know? Yeah, so but the, yeah. yeah, and it was just a little bit annoying, sort of like that it always output that name and just so not just suppresses it. But that's all good. I mean, I guess it's mainly for when you're doing, um, for instance, everything, um, all text files in a directory, then it outputs basically the count for that particular text file. I can actually close that upper shell. Uh, it outputs basically the count. Um, and a grand total as well. So it depends how you need to use it. Um, or just instead of cat, use read away. WC dash L less than iris.csv. That's possible too. Yeah. There, there's a there's a phrase you'll come across among, shall we say, the most snooty Unix users called UUOC. Useless use of cat. <laughs> Useless use of cat, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Right, um, and one thing we can pro, um, I'm just gonna jump ahead a little bit. Um, BC is an, a little tool that allows you to um, perform calculations. So for instance, if you have, um, It's easy, I know, two plus three, what, what will it be? You can pipe that through BC and it calculates basically those simple expressions. So it can do a lot more. It can, um, if we're looking at the main page. Um, do you know about using the three less than signs? The what? Three less than signs for a here dot. BC, less than, less than, less than, and then put the input in quotes and it gets for the standard input. Right. 
Um, you can do all kinds of expressions. Uh, you can have variables apparently and things like that. Um, the floating point. Floating point, yep. Or so rather fixed point to x decimals. Yeah, it has uh, arbitrary. F uh, arbi it says it has arbitrary precision. That's for integers. Yeah. But you. Uh, so you the floating point. How many decimal places you yeah, I think by default it's like if scale you. Scale equals three. Scale equals yeah. Ten, yeah. Yeah. So if we have two point one two point seven six. So it seems, uh, but I think it's. Uh, Try two over three. What does it do? Just do two over three. Okay, so it, it depends on the input. Yeah. So if you specify something like two divided by three, how many places will it show? Yeah, see, so you've got to specify mm. scale. scale equals five semicolon. No. So, so what? Scale it, equals five semicolon. In front, in front of the two slices. Scale. Equals how many places you want? Five? Yeah. Semicolon. Semicolon. And then try that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Can you also then say is that how do you specify because it doesn't do zero point? How do you get the zero at the front? Is that one point scale 1.5? Uh, nope, no, it's not the one. The numbers. So we have the length and the scale. So there might be something called length as well. Okay. Link. Scale, I base, O base, input, number base. No, it doesn't know length. Last, no length, nothing. Mm. Um. Rules on the scale. Oops. Let's have. Probably specify an object format, maybe. Mm. Well, it seems, yeah, I mean, if you do 3 divided by 2, it outputs 1.5. Mm. Or 5 decimals, so. That's only because you specify 5 decimals. If you yeah, yeah, but I mean, what I mean is. Um, if we remove that, yeah, it outputs one then. But it has, I wonder whether it just omits a zero anyway, if it's a zero. But that's okay. Um, with that, you can sort of like do calculations. Um, and just the one thing that I can think of at the top of my head, if I'm outputting this for instance, but I want to know actually how many lines are in the actual file without the header um, I can in theory you could use tail minus n minus one right tail minus n and a number shows the x so tail minus n minus one will show all but the first line I think yeah, try that. Tail minus N. No, I just wanted to, to have the number, how many rows are in that file. And then WC that, that output. Yeah. The way I do it is sort of like I do a well, WC minus L to output the whole number and then uh, subtract minus 1 and push it through BC to get the number. Yeah. But if we are doing, so you, you min, so what was it? Minus N minus 1? I think so. I think it's tail rather than head. And that will output all except the first line. Oh, what does that do? Was that that is... Uh, mm. uh, uh, or should it be head minus n minus 1? So 5.9. So that's the last one. Yeah, it's the last one that it output. So if it's head... Okay. Uh, and then count there. So no, it still has, the, still has the header row. Mm. Do I have to use it without... Do I have... Mm. No, okay. No, no, no. So, no, it's wrong. It's minus n plus one. Okay. So Head? Minus oh, n right. To start outputting with. No, plus two. Plus two. To start outputting with line there. Okay. Okay, minus n plus two. Tail minus n plus two. Tail. Tail. Oh, tail. tail. Yeah. Sorry. Tail minus n plus two. So the. Okay, is that all right? Um, okay, we'll just pull it through. Yeah, so I'll put it. Yeah, okay, cool. N plus 2. Okay, so this is like a wraparound shortcut? This is a positive argument. So, yeah. but, but, but before, without the plus sign, it's treated as a negative argument. Oh, Glenn wants to talk. Yeah, sure. Go ahead, Glenn. Um, can you do that with cut? Um, <laughs> Whoa, that was a bit loud. Um, doing what with cut? 
this um, removing the first line. Cut does columns. Um, tail does rows. So if we're doing um, if we're doing a cat and we have a delimiter comma for instance, yeah, and we want the first thing. field um, and use iris, then we get basically the first column in there. And you want tail in combination with cat like that. So if you're doing tail minus n plus two, oops, and then do a minus minus l, we get still one fifty out. Does that answer the question? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I didn't. I I thought cat would allow you to take out lines as well, but no, unfortunately no, not. I, you, I misunderstood. You, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's I guess the Unix philosophy: do one thing and do it well. It's either yeah. cutting rows or columns. <laughs> yeah, thanks. But yeah, no, good good thing pointing out with cut actually is actually one thing that I forgot um, to put in my notes. Cut, you can um, cut out things. So you, um, what I showed here was basically using a delimiter. I think by default it is tab, I believe. Um, and then you can specify how many fields you want to have. But you can use cut, I believe, also you want to have X number of characters that you actually want to cut out. Um, I'll just have to have a look. It's minus C characters. Select any of these characters. You bytes. Oh, just checking. Remember, tail wants a plus sign to flip its sense of what it shows. Head wants yeah. a minus sign. So if I do cut one to five of iris. Then it outputs really just the first five characters. Then, um, so yeah, depending on <coughs> depending on whether your data has a an actual um, delimiter or not, um, you would use either fields or C for columns or actually yeah, sorry, yeah, characters. Um, cool. Um, what else? Yeah, so the thing that I came across in that video that I mentioned in the chat was the command column, which I actually didn't know existed, but I mean, there are so many commands um, actually, oh man, that I um, definitely don't know all of them. So that allows you to format basically your input into multiple columns. So if you have a CSV file like the output there, it's a little bit higgledy piggledy depending on how much you have in the columns. So if you um, um, have column in there, um, could you take two files and paste? Line line? That's yeah. paste, I think. Oh, okay. Paste or C paste, there's one of them that can do that. Um, yes. Yeah. So if we have column, um, I have to look at my notes here. Um, okay, I use the separator, minus S, and minus T, I want them printed as a table. I'll just put this through list. And then all of a sudden you have a nice sort of like tabular display um, that you can go through which I'm probably going to use a lot more often now when I'm actually looking at sort of like files like that. And I mean, since you can basically specify an arbitrary separator that makes a really nice actually working on any um, text files, whether that's, whether it's for instance, whether there's a tab in there or semicolon or colon, um, that makes it really easy putting that in a sort of like slightly easier to read format. It's, um, <sighs> We have BC, um, grep, right, grep, allows you to find f text oh. in files. Um, yeah, so um, depending on how you look, so if you, so you just look basically for a pattern, um, what I'm going to look for, I'm going to look for this. E 
Um, if I'm going to look for that, if you want to be, if you want to turn off pattern recognition, you can use capital F. It's using F grep then, which is the same thing as F grep. Yeah. Ah, right. So okay. Grep, yeah. So you can see that it finds things. Um, probably use something else. Where do we find do I find grep in text files? Yes. So I have two grep files. Um, it's probably a little bit dark. Um, one thing um, that I'd like to know is actually where in that file is it? So capital H for file name. Yep. Capital H is basically for the for outputting the file name. Uh, minus n. Oops. N is basically for the line number. So you can now see that I use in my little notes text file, which I have open here as well, I use grep twice in line 52 and 57. And if I use the I as well, then I do basically, whoops, apologies for that, I use um, case insensitive matching, which is sometimes handy if you don't know whether there was in uppercase, lowercase, mixed case, or whatever in a text where you just know oh, uh, uh, that should occur somehow in there. Uh, for instance, if it's a username and um, if a username is sort of like case insensitive but not the password, then you might want to look with um, a case insensitive search through that for a log file. Um, cool. Search for lines not matching? Um, yeah, um, yeah, is this inverse? Yeah. Invert match yeah. yeah. So if we want to find everything that doesn't have grep in there, then we get a lot more. Um, and counting lines, counting matches. Counting? Okay. Instead of using WC, just grep-c. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, sort of, if we're doing it that way. Oh, okay, so we're finding the matches, yeah. Cool. Another thing is you can also specify how many lines before and after the match you want to output as well. They can be handy as well. So for instance, if a certain error occurs and you know the error message that you're looking for, but you want to see the command that's also in the output file, then you can specify um, how many um, lines of Output you want to have? Oops. Will be called context. Typically called oh, context. what is it doing here? Um, dum 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 dum. Mm, next count. Mm. Remember. Also, Q to report whether line control. So, minus capital A for after context. B for before context and in general context of A, output content. Yeah, so A, B, C, <laughs> funnily enough. So if we wanted, um, for instance, after and before, we can do go back to our, so we had, oops, not that one, um, not the inverse. So we had here our grep, and we basically want to have before two and after two. So we can then see basically a little bit of the context um, around that particular file. So 52 was the hit, and we see basically the output from 50 to 52, 50 to 54. We probably should use just one line because they're immediately next to each other. Cool. So you can now see that it puts, um, struggling here with my microphone. Um, so you can see here like a dash dash in there that's actually between hits. And here, basically, I'll put them together because it's actually contiguously um, overlap, basically. Yep, that's all right. Um, okay, so that's great. Other thing is find. Um, find. I find sometimes useful. And I, I found find in the early days confusing um, because is with the the way that you have to use the options is a specific order to it. 
So you have to use find and then you put the directory first and then the options come afterwards. Yeah. You which can put any number of directories. Yeah. But which I always find confusing because you always I usually learn to always put the options first and then non option arguments come at the end. Yeah. And find didn't. <laughs> it's sort of like the opposite of that. <laughs> That was always a bit confusing. Anyway, find or find dot sort of like does the current directory. Um, if, um, if we're looking in temp, for instance, um, but we want, for instance, what are the directories currently, rather than outputting files, you can specify via minus type. F would be file. We're just seeing files then. Or minus D, we see directories then. I should probably put something in between. I have a few directories in there. Um, you can do dash name, dash I name for location sensitive. Yes, so the other thing is if if you're actually wanting to um, do a bit more restrictive, so anything starting with a G for instance of that directory. Um, then you use basically a glob syn syntax, if I'm correct, um, G star. Um, if you don't know um, whether that is lower or uppercase, use I name, because that's then case insensitive. It also has regular. Yeah, and as if you want to go wild, then you have regular expressions as well. If sort of like the simple glob syntax doesn't work. But um, yeah, you have to figure out which regex uh, flavor that particularly is. Um, can we sometimes take as much time as uh, doing a few more command lines? Cool. Um, one thing that I found useful, not necessarily efficient, um, is using um, the exec flag. Yeah. It basically spawns new processes off when it, with any file that passes through. Um, so, for instance, if I look in this um, directory for text files, I mean, find searches recursively, and you can specify how many directories, how low it should go and whatnot. So, but in our case, there's only one directory here. We could probably um, um, Next step. Um, oops. So, we just create another file so if we, we can now see oh, okay it also creates finds that one so if you wanted then for instance um, to do something with these files um, then you can use the exec flag um, in this case we could use the um, wc minus l because we want to output how many rows or lines of uh, text are in these ones with the curly brackets open and close, that basically gets replaced with the um, file name when it spawns off that process. And then this thing took me always forever remembering yeah. Yeah. the so backslash cool. semicolon. Or single quote semicolon. Or something, yeah. uh, that is basically the end of the command. Yeah. So that it's not being interpreted by bash, but by find. So it passes through now. Can you see a reason why the directories have to go in front? Because the possibility of confusion. Yes, yeah, yeah. Would I mean, <laughs> but you see, I was I started using find before I actually came across the exec, yeah. um, and I usually piped things into a file and then worked through the file and things like. And then I came across and I said, oh, you can do that as well. Yeah. And as you're right, Lawrence, there it makes sense that you actually put if you're having multiple directories and things that you're actually uh, going with find through makes sense having just one command at the end and there's no confusion regarding that then so if we're going outputting that um, so it basically also um, finds all these because if I would just regular if I would just do regular bash, bash extension of star.txt then um, it wouldn't find my um, Bla text file in the subdirectory. So yeah. also handy to use find with together with grep, for example, grep dash q. Grep dash q just quietly exits with success and it finds a string, failure it doesn't find it. 
So okay. Like all files you're feeding a string. All right. So we could. Okay. Let's let's do that. Right. We're looking for um, text files um, and using grep and dash q. Dash q. Yeah. And then you got to use the print command. So um, but I still look for something. Look for something. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking for. Uh, what am I going to look for? Let's look for CD. Um, and what was it? Curly bracket and then the curly braces and yep. the backslash semicolon. Yep. And then dash print. So only print. Dash print. It only gets to the print command of the previous things. Oh, so right. Things. Okay. David said copy everything from second line until. Very large, and then in brackets, line number from nominated file. Um, what is that relating to, yeah. David? No, he put Z minus N2. Oh, he's in seven. He's in oh, seven. Seven. Seed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so the uh, it, it's relating to the previous topic you were discussing, not the current topic, which is why it's in yeah, the chat. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, yeah. I put it there so that you wouldn't be interrupted. No, that's right. So that's fine. Ian's uh, a bit too efficient. <laughs> <laughs> <That's all right. laughs> Thanks. So, uh, so good. That's found two files. Not yeah. The, yeah, it's found two files. There's probably the Jitsi is probably found because uh, it has a long hash in there. It's probably a CD in that hash. Mm -hmm. And bash txt has a CD command in there. Um, you know about XRs? So what? XRs. XRs. Yeah. So XR is meant to be used at find. Yeah. So if you if you're going to produce a lot of output, uh, perhaps it's a it's, you can use the exec for example as a filtering, and then as a final processing you can do pipe and then exargs, and then exargs will take its standard input mm. and repeat whatever arguments you give it and stick line by line on the end word by word on the end. Mm. So for example, like you know taking up where these exargs are and then if you feel safe. Yes. Yeah. 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 But there's yeah. also, instead of print, you have to print zero. Yeah. And print zero is yeah. a new extension. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Flynn. Uh, yeah, I, I um, second the exargs. I, I use this all the time. Mm. Like, if you want to find, um, um, I do a bit of, or a lot of C++ development. Yeah. And sometimes you want to search through your code base and find <laughs> a certain thing in every, in every header file. So you oh, find right. yep. use a find command to find all the header files, and you pipe it to exargs and grep, which mm. does what you just did there, but it's much easier to understand. Yes, that's correct. But, you don't have to remember that here, complicated using syntax. Using the external command as part of the filtering, as opposed to the final processing. So this is you know grep dash q is a handy way of finding files that match, and you can do other kinds of you know processing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, exact. And then the dash print zero and the dash zero, if you have file names with weird characters in them, that can cause trouble with bash sy with shell syntax. So dash print zero is a GNU extension which says output each matching thing followed by a null, not followed by a new line. And then mm. XR dash zero reads the input delimited by nulls, not by new lines. Mm. So if your file names contain new lines, it will still work. Did they come through? Did you get that? Uh, Glenn's just posted. Uh, he's going find. Yes. Yeah. Every uh, yeah, every header file, and then pushing x through xargs, and then mm -hmm. doing the search there. Yeah. yeah. So your xargs is good for your final processing. Yeah. But for your filtering, yeah. you get to you know, actually Yeah. So um, just to <coughs> you were blah, blah, dip, 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 dip. so you were doing so where are you. Um, dash print zero, and then you could use xargs dash zero. Dash zero yeah. Right. So dash print outputs one match to a line, but dash print zero. So if we would do that, and then you would do x, x not that it makes, and then dash zero. Dash zero, Oops. zero. Yeah. And then just a simple echo, not just for example. But yeah, and then you just do it like that? That will work. That'll work. So xargs always puts the input on the end. Yeah. So you don't have a choice. You see, like, you find yeah. yourself. See, that's yeah. another thing. You can't use XRs if you want a command where you want to put stuff after the phone name. Mm. You know, whereas find itself can do that. So that's another thing. Yeah. Okay, cool. 
So this this print zero x r x dash zero will be sort of like using null terminated strings rather than new line terminated ones, so which can be handy too. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, that's well, actually well, everything that I had sort of like in mind. Things that I sort of like use on a regular basis. Modification dates. Fine. Yeah. M time, M min, M max. Yes, yeah. So find has gazillions of options. Yeah. Um, all temporary files in yeah. directory. Yeah. Anything older than X number Yeah. Files. Old files, new files. So it's, it's, it's very, very useful. Bracketing symbols. If you want to do more complicated expressions, you go there. You wanna Oh, right. Um, well, dash, dash opening parenthesis and dash closing parenthesis, and you got to do backslash because the back shell will interpret it. But that, that's a group thing because by default, when you specify multiple conditions, it's and. Yeah. So to do all, you do dash o. Right. Dash a is explicitly and, dash o is explicitly all. Hmm. But then dash a binds more tightly than dash o. So if you want to do hmm. bracketing, then you do dash less, dash opening parenthesis, dash closing parenthesis. Yeah. Yeah, so, so you can do very, very complex experiments. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, so I've done my bit. Does anyone else want to show off some of their cool bits that they use? Glenn, you seem to be using a lot of commands and whatnot. No, those are all my tricks, sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a one-trick pony. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> I, I'm usually a one-trick pony myself, so it's very few things that I only know. It's good having an encyclopedia called Lawrence here next door. Um, he can tell you all about the command line options usually. Um, but yeah, um, cool. Um, David? Well, I, d I don't know about one-trick pony, maybe broken down old hack. Um, what, one of the things that I often use is the dash H option. <laughs> for a lot of these commands. I mean, you were working with uh, ls before. Uh, you can use dash h with that. Another one is, of course, du and df to mm -hmm. find out how much disk space is used and how much disk is free. Um, the dash h gives you, uh, I think they refer to it as human readable numbers. So you end up with um, uh, k and m and so on. Uh, suffixes rather than great long numbers of how many bytes are in the file in the case of your ls in front of you um, or your your df there if you if you do another df just to compare dfh with df unadorned uh, you can see that um, we're getting the size with g's and t's and m's for mega bytes uh, rather than the 1k block description um, so human readable there you go. That's two cents worth. No, nope, definitely got a, yep. And I mean, more advanced things are using DD, for instance, when you're dealing with ISO images and putting them on SD cards when you're dealing with um, Raspberry Pis and stuff. But <laughs> that's a different one. That has a strange syntax, to be honest. That has no dash option. It has more or less um, no dashes and just um, IF for input. Apparently Fire. Old on IBM mainframe command. All right. Yeah, it's it feels very old the way it is, but that's all right. I mean, once you get used to it, that's fine. But, but so um, the, hold on. The the hold on, Lawrence. Yes. Oh, sorry. No, I'm um, sorry. Right. Yeah, DD. DD has a an option um, which I can never remember the order of it, which was dash dash status equals progress, or the other way around, which prints on the terminal how far, how many bytes it's done out of how many. So you yes. Can, follow its progress. I totally agree. I can, can't remember it either. But that's why I usually write it down whenever I have documentation. <laughs> so it's a page, but the, apparently the command, if you look at the man page, DD is the copy and convert command. But CC was already taken from the C compiler. So oh, right. Co the next DD. Oh, I see. Um, that's interesting. So instead of copy and convert, yeah. I could never understand why is it DD? Data destroyer? Yeah. <laughs> well, if you do, <clears throat> if you sort of like override things with yeah. with nulls as or zeros, then yeah, mm -hmm. it's definitely overwritten. Or with random things, then yeah, there's not much to recover. Um, One handy tip with the DU command, and many people know it, is 
you can DU multiple directories in a row. And if you DU a subdirectory and then the parent directory in that order, it will exclude the subdirectory from the parent directory. Okay. Right. So if we're doing a DU. For example, you got something with a dot git subdirectory in it? Uh, yes. So um, you can DU.git and then. Sorry, dot. I'm just going to go. Oops. Make that a bit bigger. Um, so here we have a git one, and yep. So, yeah, so, so if we du dot git and then dot, and then what? And then the and dot. then dot. So that will show you how big the dot git is, and then how big the source tree is without the git history. Uh, so it shows you the size of the current source tree. Right. So oh, d, sorry, du dot s. Try du dot ks. So this one, yeah, okay. So if I would do that and do that, oh, all right, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. so, you see so if it's in the same tree, then it excludes them. It excludes them. So you might you do the subdirectories first, and then the parent directory. Yeah. Oh, that's really handy. Yeah. So you know how big the source tree is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. I mean, you can just omit the dot .get because you don't care about that then. Mm -hmm. yeah. David, just, and he posted the comment that with DD, it's status equals progress. Ah, yeah. Progress status equals progress, yeah. yeah. And before, did you see Glenn, he made the thing, find space dot minus name, and then in double quotes, star dot H. Mm -hmm. And he does it, uh, yeah. Pipe. X out of the script, and then yeah. the string. Yeah, that's basically if we're using XRX then, yeah. If you do a multiple search, you always, you get lost. I mean, you want to see the file name mm. at the very minimum. Otherwise, yeah. you yeah. know where it's going from. Cool. Um, all right. Um, any takers? Alistair? Would you like to show something? No microphone, can't hear you. Your mic's off, Alistair. Hmm, maybe having dinner. That's all right. Um, cool. Um, Ian, do you I've want? Got, oh, sorry. I've got one thing to add. That that command I posted there with Xargs. Yeah. Um, a lot a while back when I was at university, we were looking at something and trying to figure this out. And if you use um, dash exec, like you've already pointed out, that mm. creates another process. Yeah. yeah. So for certain tasks, that can be really, really slow. Correct. And and obviously, exargs is not a um, it's not a, a one size fits all. But for a lot of things, it's not creating another process. So mm. it it just it'll go faster if if you can use it. So it's actually better to use the exargs one if you want it to go fast and it's not very complicated. Yes, that's a good point. Yeah. Also, I think it, it, it can batch up multiple inputs for one command. That's been exarchs. Exarchs will spawn. Well, yeah. So exarchs command, and then it will it can even put multiple from inputs onto a single command. Oh, OK. So, yeah, yeah. OK. Mm. Works control and then work. Cool. I mean, I had the problem with um, find an exec that I was, it goes back quite a number of years, but I was searching through a lot of files and it was extremely slow until I realized that it, it was actually going nuts with spawning new processes. Um, and But then I thought, well, I didn't know any better. Um, but if I had known about XRX, I would probably go on with that. But it's good to know about that, depending on what you're looking for. If you if it's simple and fast, then go XRX. If it needs to be a bit more complicated, then you might have to go maybe with the dash exec option. How many, like how many things were you doing, like few thousands? There was a few thousands, but that was going back to the days of spinning disks and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it goes probably back 15 years or so. I was thinking, you know, you know in large files. Yeah. But um, I mean, if you're trolling through thousands and tens of thousands of files, um, large log files, then it can be extremely painful. So cool. Um, I guess if there's 
not anything else, we can hand over to Ian because he has a little presentation prepared. I'm just going to stop sharing then. You're off or not, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. Check one, two, three. All good? All good. All good. Yeah, I don't know how to start a slide, so yeah. F5. Oh, okay. Um, um, Okay, uh, I'm just going to do a little presentation on a Bash Help GUI utility that I wrote uh, the other day, or this week, or something. Uh, in fact, more than one of them, uh, as you'll see. Um, what I found, and what you're probably well aware of, is that if you go uh, and and tab, then um, it will allow you to see all the possible um, uh, bash commands that are out there. Um, unfortunately, I put this together on a on a system running Z shell, not bash. But um, so as you can see, it came up with. 7,409 possibilities. Um, I can then, if I uh, auto load, oh, in fact, I, I had already done this auto load bash comp it in it or whatever, and um, that, that allows me to run uh, um, the computer uh, uh, completion generator for bash, which is different from Z shell. I, I might add, and um, when I go comp gen minus c and do a, a, a line count on it, I get 6,138, so somewhere I've lost about a thousand, but hey, when there's that many, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, and what I did was I wrote a little Python program where, as you can see here, I use subprocess and I bring import check output. And then I issue the um, check output and I issue a comp gen minus C, shell is true, and I say the executable is slash bin slash batch. And then I clean it all up. And out of that, I get a, a list of commands. And I remove duplicates from the list is one of the things with the, this command here. And um, what we find is we now have a total of 4,185 batch commands have been identified. Just by, but I go through my command list now that I've cleaned it up. Um, so they're, they're all unique anyway. And um, um, when you look for information on, on any Bash utility, you've got the man page, which uh, is, is the man command is issued. Um, so you're all familiar with that. And then um, the other way is if, if you use what is, it will. Um, uh, it will just display. If we go back here, what it, it takes the um, uh, the the, disc, the disc, description from the man page. Okay, uh, is that what? Oh, and the other one that you're all familiar with is the dash h and the dash dash help. Okay, um, the short form was uh, minus h, and if it's got that sort of help, it will give you all the um, arguments that can be used with, in this case, alias logins. Um, in the case of base name minus H, it didn't know about uh, a minus H to provide help, but it did know about dash dash help and provides the, um, uh, the help information. Okay, I was a bit out of order there. And so um, my little program it's a collection of all bash commands using the comp gen uh, utility, and uh, it, it, uh, the, once I've got all the bash commands, I clean up the list and convert it to a dictionary. Um, I learnt GUI and place the dictionary into a tree, and then uh, going through the tree, you can uh, then select an item, and I display <coughs> in a text viewer um, four different things if possible. Uh, the, the what is 
and I just take the description field, which is, comes out of the man pages anyway. Um, I, I, I do the minus H information, I do the dash dash help information and the man pages. And then I also um, did another version of the program where I provided a search field, well, sort of a search field. So, that, well, I think that's about my little program. Oh, um, I started writing it on another computer using uh, GTK3, and then Peter, and I sent it to Peter, and he said, why don't you have a search field? So there's another version, dash search. And then I did an upgrade to GTK4, and both of those. And I then um, thought I'd give it a try and wrote it on um, QT6. Um, there's another, there's a different GUI to try out. And then I tried a backport of that to QT5. Um, so there's, what's that, it's, uh, eight, there's eight different programs that all basically do the same thing. Um, if you really want to, <laughs> all eight, you can get the plus my, my GitHub repository. Um, and I'll, I'll post, I'll post, I'm going to post all eight, but uh, I'll post some on the WLUG repository as well, um, which is what, github wlab.com, it'll be wlug slash meetings slash the date today, I think, and then in, in off that. Um, okay, so, so let's see whether it works, I suppose. Um, I'll get rid of that. Boom. And um, what's this one? Just slide that down a bit somewhere on over there. Um, right. So if we just try the, the first one that I did, which um, I originally did on um, uh, on a Ubuntu computer. At, um, th this is my Manjiro terminal with a dark theme. More defaults to that. So we come up with. Um, uh, better ID information. Um, I'm running GTK 3.4. Uh, I'm running Bash 3.10. Oh, sorry, I'm running. Uh, uh, that should say should say Python. I'm running Python 3.10.5. And okay, and it's, it's come up with a total of 4,185 Bash commands I've identified. So I've got this tree here. Um, it basically just took all the bash commands and put them in alphabetical order and and, uh, and then made keys for them. Um, using, uh, what are we using here, GTK, I have this like auto auto opening on a on a, a, a particular thing. So if I click on here, it will auto open. And, um, and if I click on date, then you can see here that there's no um, oh, well, we see we've got the description from the what is command, which so the print or set the system date and time. Um, that's from the man page um, description. Uh, there's no minus H that, that I could get, and there is a dash dash help, so we can look through the help here and get all the parameters, and then. Later on, I add, I tack on the man page for it, and um, we get the whole man page story, which may include more than just what's in the help in a lot of cases. So um, you can just do that. Now, I've got, oh, so I'll just try something else. C++, no, it doesn't have. Um, uh, while I'm here, I'll, I'll just, if I click on, um, this Kaka demo, that, that's the minus H. Yeah, that, that's the minus H. And if I, if I, there's a, a couple of demos. So if I kill off that one, that's the another a bit of um, Kaka demo um, for for the dash dash help. And I think it's just randomly selected. So if I if I click on, I'll just go somewhere else first, and then I go back. If I do it again. Is that the same one? Well, it's not. Yeah. Oh, that's a bit different. Oh, and every now and then, it, I think I've got it. It's taken too long. So I've actually got an error message come up. Oh, yeah. Um, Okay, so that's, oh, and this one, Kaka Fire, looks pretty. Um, that's the minus H, and this is the dash dash help. It's the same. 
Yes. Um, what was the other one? I think if I go down here, we've got uh, A, B, C, D. There's another one when you ask for the help that gives you a. Um, it gives you a. <laughs> uh, the old cogs thing. Yeah. So, but again, my program doesn't doesn't like hanging on that aspect. I think it's, it does it for both help and help. Um, okay, so that's that's kind of a little program where um, you just click on something and you get all the help it can find, so to speak. Um, I don't I don't guarantee that that it does always find everything. Um, like I said, we started off with it claiming it had seven thousand items and it went down to about four. But um, I think most of them are there. So. Uh, yeah, well, may, maybe at the Python meeting we could look at the code because I just sort of played with um, sub-process commands until I got it to work and then I, uh, I quickly moved on. But, um, some of them I'm using that uh, check output and some I'm using run. And, and, and you know that presentation before I, where I used um, string IO and uh, context here, I couldn't get that to work. I thought, oh, this will be easy. I'll just use that, what I used, the same bit of code, and use my context and my string I.O., and I'll, I'll get things. But it didn't work for that. So, um, whereas it works for getting the Python help. Yeah. So, okay. Um, so, just to show you that I, I did write something else that was a bit different. Um, we're in GTK3. Um, QT. What? QT search. What? The Q QT. QT was search. Yeah, oh, well, so I'll just show you how the search is a bit different between GTK and um, this is this is GTK four, which was just I, I ran GTK three and um, and went through and got all the bugs. You know, just it just kept having errors until I eventually removed enough things to, to get it to run with GTK four. So we're at GTK four point six dot six, and Python three ten five. And I put a little icon here on this one. So here's the bash commands are still the same. Oh, I put numbers up here, miscellaneous there, and then we then we go alphabetical on my list. Um, and again, with GTK, it allows this auto open uh, condition to to occur. Um, we've lost our little blue outline for GTK four. I don't know whether you noticed. I think. Oh, oh no, maybe it's the other one. QT does that. Um, but if, if I go search, it opens a, a, a window over. over. Um, actually, with GTK3, you can position the window. GTK4, as a as a, a feature of going to GTK4, they, they take out the positioning of the sub-window. So, so here I can put, say, CD, and um, I get everything that starts with CD, and I can see about the change working directory um, command and and it has a man page and things like that um, so that's how my my my, uh, my little search thing works and then okay so that's GTK and if we want to try um, six go to QT QT six with a search um, Oh. I got I, I got sick of trying to make <laughs> windows, so I over it's the same down here. Um, oh, that's what one goes blue when you collect it. So um, yeah, if I go, oh, but this has a different style. It doesn't auto open. Maybe it does, but I can't find the, the code to write it to make it auto open. So so you it manually opens the tree. You mean you have to click? Yeah, I mean you have to click. Right. And I also have to write code that if I click here, it doesn't try and accept D as a as a return value. Oh. You know, when I click on date, it's you know, I want the child, not the parent. Yeah. yeah so yeah. D is the parent, and the child is date mm. and dev one D and stuff like that. So um, so I had to put a little bit of code in there to ignore the parent, and and when I click on date, it gives me. Gives me the you know, date thing. Um, so, so there's more clicking on this one, um, and then I also I embedded the search uh, window. It's actually in a um, what do you call those things? Um, 
slider. No, what's it? Switcher. Um, there's a panel here too. I can move. You, know, you can forget what they call that. You can just drag. You know, you can change the yeah. dimensions. Plus, you can program it. I've got this set to like five times or four times a, equal to one or something. It's a ratio. Oh, but a bit of jiggle <laughs> down there. Yeah. It doesn't doesn't kind of like me. See, I get this message. This plug plugin supports grabbing the mouse only for pop up windows. <laughs> um, okay, so we put. Oh, if we put CD, okay, we get yeah, CD again or something like that. Or put LS. You've got all the different LS things. Um, yeah, and what I notice, like if I go LS USB, it doesn't give me any um, help. But if I open another window, oh, open a, um, another window. Control Shift T. Hmm? Control. 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 Shift Alt T. Oh, I'll just close this off. So I can open it again. Um, yeah, uh, what was it? L S U S B minus H. Yeah. So, <laughs> for some commands, I don't get anything back, but others, I do get things back. But normally, it's dash dash help. A lot of them have deprecated the dash H. Yeah, but the, this works here. But when I run it in my program, it, it so some. If I go back here and I go, yeah, one of them works. Um, LS. One of the LS works. But another one's didn't. What was I doing? LS USB. Mm. Even though. Yeah, if I click that, see, it, it doesn't get any help info to return. Mm. It did pick up the man utility. Mm. So you got something. Um, and I think that works. I don't know. LS PCI is the same. LS mod. Sorry? Oh, is it? Mm. Ah, okay. That's odd. Ah, okay. Oh, well, that's a patch. This result? Um, LS Mem does work, though. It, so who, maybe a different guy wrote that utility. <laughs> Who wrote that one? Doesn't say. Okay, okay. Cool. so um, I think that's probably all I can see. Um, I'll show you for that. And um, yeah, if you want to come back at the next Python meeting, you can <laughs> debug my code. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like a deal. Uh, oh, one other thing I could show. See how that picked up a dark theme? If I go to the um, QT5, for some reason or other, it has a, a light theme. Okay, and so an inverted uh, theme, yeah. Let's see what happens with USB here. Now, it's which? Oh, 20 gigs or something. Gigs, yeah. yeah, that's funny. Um, what? I can go to. Um, uh, if I go to system tools and I, I, I don't think I'm, yeah, you know, I don't think I'm over a, over a couple of gigs. See, I'm only using 3.5 gigs. I've got 16.6% .6 of my RAM. Mm -hmm. If I close, but I have to, I can't seem to open another. There's LS Mem, 3.3 gigs. Mm -hmm. I was trying to. But how to show exactly how much physical memory I've got. And, and the only way is there's something that there's, like there's, 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 there's an ACP I command, but it's really root privilege, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that shows it the exact correct number. There's just one thing. When I run, 
I just, um, for backporting it, all I did was set, uh, change the two import statements. So I'm saying, said import from, um, uh, from, uh, yeah, I'll just show you. Where is it? Um, Um, okay. Yeah. So to, compared with going from GTK three to GTK four and the changes it's got to make, the only change I did, I started with Pi QT six, and I. I, I I just changed these two lines here to say Pi QT5 because I already had both versions loaded on this machine. And, um, <coughs> um, what was I say? Oh, uh, but if you look at the console, when I run it, it, it's got a message here about warning, ignoring XDG session underscore type equal Wayland on GNOME. Oh. Um, but anyway, it's only a warning. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like they fixed it <laughs> with GTK6. Because I, I think by default, um, I'm running Wayland on yeah. Manjaro. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that was one little, little, that was the only difference that I noticed. But it, it was very easy to, I think six, well, I don't know how many changes. I'm sure there are, you could write code that you would have to make changes to the code. But, um, but in my case, I didn't. I didn't write code that, that needed any changes. Hmm. Anyway, we could look at the code another day. Eh? Yep. Cool. All right. So, any questions? Where's my little panel? No, so good, I think. Did anyone, Peter? Any questions from the audience? Uh, it's time for bed. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. cool. All right. All good. Thanks, all right. Ian. That's all right. Yeah. Cheers, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Paul. And on that note, um, thanks everyone for coming tonight. I wish you a restful sleep. <laughs> I'm looking forward to mine. Um, but Nick it. So let's see what we're going to do next month then. And Ian turned the microphone off, so I needed to turn mine on again. Um, in that case, thanks everyone for coming again. And I uh, will turn off the recording now and hopefully see you next month again. See you later.